Uh, looking at health inequalities and ways in which we can uh, reduce, uh, you know, those differences in the risks and outcomes is, um, as mentioned by Mrs. Bruce, at the core of absolutely everything that public health is about. And obviously, the COVID pandemic has highlighted those gaps uh, in a much more stark way compared to how we m might have previously viewed some of these differences. Public health are involved in ongoing pieces of work that are either completed or in progress to look at and better understand uh, health inequalities, as well as looking at what we can do to address them. And I'll, and, and I'll give some examples. I think one of the examples is around providing systems leadership for wider stakeholders in terms of understanding what specific health inequalities we're looking at and what we need to prioritize. Currently, the ones with local plan is undergoing review and as part of the Health and, uh, Health and Wellbeing Board, I've set up a subgroup of officers to try and look at how we can influence some of those wider socioeconomic uh, issues that, that you mentioned, including housing by influencing planning and neighbourhood planning, for example. But also, I just wanted to quickly, if I may, uh, touch on a few other uh, ongoing pieces of work around health inequalities. Firstly, this year, I've just published the annual Director of Public Health report for uh, Wandsworth, which is entitled Health Inequality in Wandsworth, Turning Aspiration into Reality. This is my first report for the London Borough of Wandsworth. And uh, I also just want to thank the fantastic team that have helped me to produce the report whilst we're in the middle of a pandemic. The report explains the concept of health inequalities and celebrates some of the successes that are already taking place within Wandsworth communities, addressing areas of health inequality, such as promoting physical activity. We've got programs uh, to promote healthy eating. There's ongoing work to tackle social isolation and loneliness. We're doing some work around promoting uh, recognition of mental health and public mental health. Uh, we previously brought to committee, for example, a strategy around tackling suicide and prevention. All of this work is about addressing health inequalities, but addressing them in a very specific way. Uh, just secondly, we've also started to look at our understanding of COVID within the borough uh, and looking at our own data to improve our understanding of the impact of uh, COVID on health inequalities. And the initial findings are showing that some of what has happened nationally in terms of disproportionate impact affecting particular groups, such as BAME groups, people living in more deprived areas, are also potentially replicated. Now, in public health, we've already had work that we're doing, for example, uh, a diabetes action plan uh, jointly with the uh, CCG. And so it's just highlighting that some of those things that we're doing already, there's further mileage, particularly diabetes, because COVID has shown that the vast majority uh, of people who died from COVID also had diabetes on their death certificates. And actually, that proportion went up when you looked at people from BME uh, backgrounds. So again, continuing that work is, is really important. Lastly, public health are looking at services that have been severely impacted during the COVID pandemic. Some of our commissioned uh, services in primary care, such as health checks, smoking cessation, uh, sexual health, really important for addressing health inequalities because it's about people who need more access to those services, uh, some of whom haven't been coming forward. Some of those services couldn't be provided in the same way during the pandemic. So we've now started looking at how we can bring back those services online and bring them back in a new way that addresses those groups in the community where we know that uh, the potential disadvantage could be greater.